Hey guys and welcome back! Some time ago my grandmother found out about my doll hobby and she asked me if I can make a Bulgarian doll with our national costume and she really wanted to participate in this project and she wanted to make the clothes for me so I was more than happy about it. This doll came to me in a really bad condition, she had some pink stains, melted hair and some scars on her forehead but this didn't bother me much. In fact, I quite liked her imperfections and I had other plans for her and her scar. But then this project came and since most of our costumes include the combination of green and red color and my grandmother's costume didn't have so much greens, I thought that she would be the perfect doll for this project. Now a bit about the process. I already removed her hair and now I'm removing the factory paint with pure acetone and q-tips. The interesting thing is that her whole head was covered in paint and that never happened to me before. I'm curious to know if any of you had a similar experience with any other doll. Ta-da! She is clean! Now to remove the scar. I'm using P320 sandpaper and lots of patience. When I'm satisfied with the result, I give her a soapy butt and a few layers of Mr. Super Clear. Now we can start with the fun part, drawing the face. Oh, and by the way, all the materials are listed in the description below, so you can check it if you're curious about them. For this face up, I tried keeping my sketching as clean as possible for the rest of the process to be easier. It's been quite some time since I had the opportunity to use a large palette of colors, so I decided to use it. But in the same time, I tried not overdoing it, so I pretty much used the same palette as the costume for her eyes.
To hide the pink stains, I decided to do some light blushing with pastels and after that it's time to give her some wrinkles and lashes. And here is my favorite part. Isn't it amazing how a tiny amount of white acrylic paint can bring so much life to the doll's eyes? Now it's time for her wig. First we need to make her a wig cap and for this I'm using some stretchy cotton fabric and PVA glue. I usually apply 2-3 to three layers since my glue is pretty thick and when it's completely dry I draw some guidelines and cut the excess fabric off. I already prepared enough wefts so what is left now is to make their bases even and to glue them onto the wig cap. I'm using universal glue, but you may use what you like. For example, PVA glue will also do the work. And now it's time for the fun part, gluing them on. Since the rose is one of our signs and we have the tradition of putting it in our hairs, I decided to make her a polymer clay one with a metal base. And to color the white polymer clay, I'm using some chalk pastels and when it's completely mixed, I form the petals and leaves.
For the shoes I'm using some plastic wrap, tape and a marker to make my patterns. I trace it on a paper to make it more even and then trace it on a fabric and cut it out. When they're done, it's time to sew them. And of course, those shoes won't be complete without some straps, and for that I'm using some thicker thread. For you to have an idea about our embroideries and costumes, I decided to share with you an embroidery I bought some time ago and a picture of me with the costume my granny made me when I was 5. It's literally a must for our costumes to have some embroideries, so I decided to give it a try and to make one. Now that everything is ready, let's assemble the doll. One interesting thing about the first two clothes is that they're made of handmade fabric that my grand-grandmother made when she was around my age. You see, at that time my country was not so wealthy, so people had to make their own fabric and not only that, but they had to grow the animals and plants that gave that fiber. Happily, from curiosity, I also learned how to make handmade fabric and it would be great if someday I use that knowledge for my dough clothes, but sadly it's very time consuming, so I will probably keep that idea for the future.
That's all for now. Thanks for watching and if you enjoy what I'm doing, please give this video a thumbs up, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!